This is a new Porsche Spyder RS, and I'm gonna find out if this could actually be the very, very best car that Porsche's GT division does for those that want to drive their car mainly on the road. Let's find out. Obviously, the biggest thing about the Spyder RS is its engine. It gets Porsche's motorsport-derived four-litre flat-six naturally aspirated engine that you get in the Cayman GT4 RS, you get in the Porsche 11 GT3 and GT3 RS. It is an absolutely stonking engine, and it should not be confused with the normal four-litre naturally aspirated engine you can get in a normal Boxster GTS. It's just different, better, specialer. Now, this thing revs to 9,000 RPM. It's insane. Plus, it puts out 500 horsepower and 450 newton meters of torque, and it drives the rear wheels for a seven-speed PDK automatic gearbox. Now let's just check out the launch on this car. So not to 60, it's supposed to take 3.4 seconds. Let's find out using the specialist timing gear. Left on the brake. Feel the throttle. Three point six seconds. That was good. A bit slower than expected, but not bad. Obviously, Porsche have made a load of chassis upgrades as well. So the Spyder RS sits 30 millimeters lower to the ground than a standard Boxster. It also has a wider track front and rear for improved road holding. Also, you have ball jointed suspension components whatever that means. Plus, the spring rates are stiffer than a standard Boxster and you get Porsche's active suspension management as well, which means adaptive dampers. However, this is really interesting. What they've done is made the spring slightly softer and the damping slightly softer than on the Cayman GT4 RS to make this a bit more compliant on the road. You also have big brakes. So 408 millimeter discs up front gripped by six piston calipers, whereas at the rear, you have 380 millimeter discs gripped by four piston calipers. If you have the optional carbon ceramics, the discs are slightly bigger still. Other things you need to know is that you've got a limited slip differential on the rear axle and active gearbox mounts. So what will this all add up to on the road? Well, we're gonna find out, but before we do, I'm gonna get someone to put the roof back up on this car because apparently it's quite complicated, but I'm not gonna watch them do it because we're gonna have a little bit of a challenge later on. Buying a new or used car? Then you need to visit CarWow and we'll help you find your perfect car at a price you'll love. Just answer a few simple questions about the car you want and our trusted dealers will come back to you with great offers. Then choose the offer that's right for you and contact the dealer directly through CarWow. No haggling, no fees and on average CarWow users save over £1,800. But what if you're not sure which car you actually want? No problem. Just watch our insightful video reviews read our impartial expert advice, or use our helpful car buying tools to discover your ideal car in no time at all. No wonder 95% of customers surveyed said they wouldn't buy a car without CarWow. I've put a link in the description of this video and the pinned comment to take you directly to CarWow so you can see for yourself how it can help you, or you can just click on the pop-out banner that should be appearing up there right now. Alternatively, just Google help me CarWow and my team and I will help you choose your perfect car and get it for a price you'll love. Now on with the video. Now the first thing I wanna check when driving this new Spyder RS is whether it is a car that's more livable every day than the hardcore Cayman GT4. Cause with that, the suspension's so far that it just jostles you about over any bumps. Also, it has a tendency to tram line so it will follow ruts in the road which makes it an absolute handful to almost get to your driving road in the first place. And then there's the engine noise. It's brilliant. But after a while, the constant noise in your ear hole when you're just wanting to get somewhere can get on your nerves a bit. And that could be worse in this because obviously with this fabric roof, you're gonna get even more sound entering the cabin. Now the first thing I can address quite quickly. The changes to the suspension on this car to make it softer than the 4RS have absolutely worked. It's noticeably more compliant, noticeably easier to just live with. It's not tram lining. It's not bouncing me about all over the place. It feels perfectly acceptable. In terms of the suspension, I could quite happily spend a long time in this seat. Now, as ever, this is the problem with driving anywhere on a road in the UK. You get behind someone doing about 30-odd in a 60, which is fine. 
And that's why it's important that cars such as this are cars that you can just sit back, relax, and just go, do you know what? I can chill, I can wait, I can bide my time. Whereas in the 4RS, I'd be itching to get past, driving in auto, just doing the job nicely. But then you apply any throttle and you do get that noise in your ear hole, which is a delight, but sometimes it can be a bit wearing. And that is just around 3000 RPM. You get higher up in the rev range and it's pretty noisy. And you might have noticed already, I've started to raise my voice a little bit because I'm cruising along. I'm doing just under the speed limit and it's pretty loud in here. Pretty loud for wind noise, pretty loud for tire noise, very loud for engine noise. So as a daily, there is still a little bit of a problem with this car, like the GT4 RS. It's not as bad and I'd much rather have it for longer journeys, but it's still there. Can't fault the brakes though. They're not grabby, they're not a problem. They're easy to use, they're very powerful. And the gearbox as well, it's on point. It doesn't change it necessarily. It changes exactly when you need it to. Steering, it's nice, precise, not overly excitable. It does make it all around a very nice package, apart from those two things about the noise. Though, that's not the main reason for buying this car, is it? This is not the kind of car that you really want to be driving around, just pootling about with the roof up. Let's stop, take it down, and have some fun. Now, I've done it before in the previous version, but I can't quite remember. Though I do know that you have to do these bits first. And I think you pull that, yeah. Then I think, do I, yes. Um, you don't want that to flop down on your carbon fiber, what? Obviously, there's the bit in here. Um, ah. Oh. oh crap. Oh. Camera money. That's cheating, Lewis. You're not supposed to help me. <laughs> I know we don't want to damage the car. Oh, blimey. What the heck? Oh, look. Yeah, look in here. There's... And now over here, there's some press studs. Do I do these? Oh, you pull them like that. And then look, see these clips here? Just under that. Right, you get in there. How do I get rid of this bit? Oh. Um. What's, what's going on with this? Is this right? Is that... Is this right? A few minutes later. I might have to look in the manual or go on the internet. So I should have lifted the clamshell to begin with. You just stood there laughing. <laughs> ah. Oh yeah, it doesn't matter, does it now? Right, I think we're on. Clips down here. Ah. Oh. We are on. Yes, 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 yes. Shit. Later. Do you know how? Come in here. He knows because he's looked it up on the internet. This has a special bag there in the boot. Yeah. So you can fold this up. Bag. For this. Yeah. So we're putting this in a bag. Putting this in the bag. Okay. And then with this. We need to get all of these holes and wiry bits underneath. So then the carbon fiber bit on the top it has it is on top protecting those. I don't want to get it all dirty on the floor. Can you take the other side? What do we do then? Uh, you need to get these underneath. So you need to flip this all the way onto the other side. Yeah. And then it's about holding it up underneath. So then it's all. Oh, I don't recall it being like this on the last one. We don't know, do we? I think we're a bit stuck. Shall we just go and move it onto the grass so we don't put it in the mud? Right, do to go look? Oh, I'm freezing. Much, much later. In here somehow. Let, 
Lewis, can you hold that? Stop it. So that looks as long as that can get down there, but I'm not convinced by that because this is over the air intake. Let's slide that through to your side a bit. So I mean, that's kind of a bit over the, that's the air intake for the engine that makes a glorious noise. But look, that does not look right there because this has got to cut down on there. His looks better. Do you want to come and do this side as well? Much, much, much later. See, this seems flatter now. Do your side. Oh my gosh. Yes, let's put those down. They go down like that, don't they? Yeah. That is it. Done. Easy. Obviously, it's going to be much easier when you know what you're doing regularly, but still, it's a bit of a palaver, isn't it? OK, here we go. Trouble is, I'm now too cold to enjoy myself. Got the heating up full, but because we've got these carbon fibre bucket seats, there's no heating in the seats. I think you can get comfort seats for this car. You can for my GT3 RS, and you'd never do that in this car, but the benefit is I think they do have heating. You see, I'm the kind of person that drives a convertible with the roof off all year round, unless it's raining, because you just got to. Anyway, let's go. <laughs> I can hear that even more now. Actually, it's not quite as annoying with the roof down. I don't know whether the other sounds kind of just hide it a little bit, so it's just not so, like, intense. And I mean that in a good way. love the steering on this. I tell you what, the steering isn't quite as dialed in as on a GT3, but it's less jittery. However, on the GT3 RS, it's dialed in without being jittery, so it's not quite as good as that. It doesn't feel as joyful in the way it responds. That's because you've got McPherson strut suspension up front, not the double wishbone of the 911 GT cars. But really on the road. It's not the biggest problem. Now, the good thing about this Boxster RS is that the PDK gearbox in this has shorter ratios than the one you get in the Boxster GTS. As a result, you can rev it out in second gear without going crazy in terms of speed, which means you get to experience that. <laughs> that utterly mental top end noise. I 100% prefer to drive it on the road than the Cayman GT4. I think if I bought a Cayman GT4 and then drove this, I'd be a bit like, oh, sh This is the car in terms of road usability that we were promised the GT4 would be. Because I think the GT4's a bit more extreme on the road than a GT3 RS. Sounds mad, but it's true. Speaking of sounding mad. Oh God, I think I might prefer this to my 3 RS. Now, if you want to see what I've done to my GT3 RS, because I've I've modified it slightly. Click on the pop-out banner up there, I'll find the link in the description below. Let me talk you around the exterior of this Porsche Spider RS. So obviously it's based on the 718 Boxster, but this front bumper is way more aggressive looking. Plus there's some huge air intakes as well to cool the radiators. You've got this big front splitter for improved aerodynamics and downforce, and it says Spider RS on it. Though it is quite low. You're going to have to be careful when heading out to country roads if you go over some speed humps. Anyway, look, you've got a vent here, this part of the front bumper, just like on a Cayman GT4 and GT4 RS, and just like the GT4 RS, carbon fibre bonnet. And this car having the Visac pack fitted to it means that it's exposed carbon fibre. It's also got some vents here in the bonnet to feed air in to cool the brakes. And because RS cars are supposed to be more track focus and hardcore and weight saving you don't have a normal Porsche badge it's like it's stuck on that, that really feels like it's stuck on do you know what on the GT3 RS it's painted maybe that is painted no it's, it's on top of the gloss Hmm, it's a sticker. Anyway, moving down the side, we've got these air breathers here to smooth airflow over the wheels, plus the wings. 
They're made out of carbon fiber and they're sculpted there. A little bit like on the GT3 RS, but not so extreme. You also like a GT3 RS and the GT4 RS, of course, have these air vents here to relieve air pressure from the wheel arches, let it escape, help keep the car nice and secure and like that, less lift. That's where I was going with that. Anyhow, alloy wheels, 20 inches, Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires. The doors are aluminium, not like on a GT3 RS when you've got carbon fiber doors as well. You've got carbon fiber door mirrors here. Once again, this is Visac pack. Then moving here, we've got exposed carbon fiber for this air intake here, which sends air in to cool the engine. On a normal 718 Boxster, that will also be your air intake for the engine. But here, on the Spider RS, that's your intake for the engine. You've got one on the other side as well, right by your ear hole, so that you can really enjoy that induction noise. And this part is covered with carbon fiber, plus there's more carbon fiber here. Once again, this will be part of the Visac pack. Then moving to the rear deck, been redesigned compared to a normal Boxster. Look at it. It's kind of got this double bubble effect and some more carbon fiber here. Once again, Visac pack, definitely Visac pack that. Moving to the rear, classic Porsche GT exhaust layout. Like on the GT4 RS, it's split tailpipes and these are titanium pipes because it's the Visac pack, otherwise you just get normal steel. Anyway, redesigned rear bumper, it's a Spider RS there. Once again, that's a sticker. And unlike a normal Boxster, you have this fixed ducktail spoiler. Really does look the part, doesn't it? This gives you a bit of downforce. This car doesn't have the same amount of downforce as a GT4 RS because it's less track focused, but it does have more than a standard Boxster. Let me explain to you the differences between the Spider RSs and the normal Boxster's interior. So this Spider RS gets the lovely Porsche RS carbon fiber bucket seats. You also get fabric door pulls to save just a tiny bit of weight. You can actually get these in different colors. Same with the seat belts. I quite like this red theme here. And obviously the red stitching here as well. It all matches in very, very nice. You also get an Alcantara steering wheel with a center marker and Alcantara on the gear selector and gear gator, plus yellow little markers for your different drive select modes there as well. Now this car, as I've already said, is fitted with the Visac pack and that includes extended Alcantara here on the dash. You also get a Visac little plaque there. You get common fiber here, other bits and pieces throughout the cabin and Visac here on the seats as well. All very nice. However, this car isn't perfect. Here's five annoying things about it. This car's towel lamps appear to mist up. I don't know if it's just this particular car or it's all Spider RSs, but that's not all. This is more annoying because the Sport Chrono clock also seems to mist up. Can you see that? It's misted. That's annoying. Because of these vents here in the bonnet for the brakes, you have 25 litres less space in the front boot. Look, there's the, the holes for the vents. Can you see them? Going down there to the brakes. I mean, the boot's still all right, but it's 150 litres on the normal box, so 125 litres here. Though, to be fair, at least there is a front boot unlike on a GT3 RS. That's proved to be more annoying than I thought it would. While you can slide these carbon fiber bucket seats forwards and backwards, and by pressing this button here, you can raise or lower them. What you can't do easily is alter the angle of the backrest. So they're fixed. And what you have to do is actually unbolt the seat and put it at a different angle manually. And that's a bit of a faff. For a Boxster, this is quite expensive. £123,000. This one, with the Visac pack and some other bits and pieces, it's £138,000. Mind you, that's still less than 911 GT3 and a lot less than a GT3 RS. But as with all those cars, there's a bit of an issue. And you can't just go into a Porsche dealer and buy one like that. You have to hope that you can get an allocation, and that ain't easy. As with many other manufacturers, Porsche has fitted a soft limiter to its Spider RS, so you can't rev it all the way up when you're stationary. Now have a listen, go on, rev it. And that's your lot, unless, of course, you do the little cheat of putting it in drive, then pulling both pedals, then you can do this. It's better, but it's not perfect. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. If you like to fiddle with your car's suspension settings, well, you can on this RS because you can manually adjust the ride height, the camber angle, and the track. 
This is a very important button here and you only get it on this Spider RS. You can't get it at all on a normal box set. It's for the nose lift. So I'm gonna show you it working now. So if I press the button, here we go. And now I don't need to worry about scuffing that splitter, do I, again, of speed humps? The alloy wheels are forged, which makes them stronger, yet lighter. Plus, you have the center locking caps for quick release. Now, if you want it, you can upgrade to magnesium wheels, which will save 10 kilograms overall, and that's unsprung mass, though they do cost £11,000 a set. Most of the car's underbody is flat. Have a look, you'll see. Helps improve the aerodynamics. Now, if I take you around the rear, Wait a minute, that sounds a bit rude. Let's go to the back of the car. <laughs> You'll see that there are these little fins underneath it to help direct airflow and reduce lift. Hopefully you can see those. Editor, point them out. Did you get all that? You can remove this rear window section of the roof, but leave the main roof in place so you can have it as a sunshade, yet let the noise from the exhaust come into the cabinet a little bit more. Also, I love this. If you have the Visac pack, Visac is embossed on the roof. So then, what's my final verdict on the Porsche Spider RS? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, like with all Porsche GT products, if you get the opportunity, just go right ahead and buy it. I think this is the best for use on the road. Or is it the ST? ST is harder to get and a lot more expensive. GT3 RS is really cool, but a bit more track focused. Ah, it's tough. I think it really could be this. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know if you agree with my verdict. I can't put my hand in my pocket. In the comments below, click on those windows there to watch some more videos. And on that box there to go to CarWow to change your car the easy way and for free. Thanks for watching.